I remember just like this immense, this cloud of fear just coming upon me, right? Something I've never felt before, like afraid and scared and all of these things all at once. What, what's going to happen? SubhanAllah, it's moments in those like you realize that I am completely powerless. This is in complete control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I was like, wow, like the immense burden I felt. Like, wow, like I have to fulfill this promise. Like my kids, I teach them to be good people and to have good character and, you know, to, to be people of action and do. But they're building your character. Yeah, and I was like, wow. I, the father plays a huge role, right? My daughters, many times I see that they look up to me, right? Uh, they, they're, they're trying to do sometimes what it is that I'm trying to do. They're watching every one of my actions. What if the daughter goes astray? Is it primarily again the mother to blame? Who would you point the fingers at? Prophet ﷺ said, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَاعِيَتِهِ Right? Every one of you is a shepherd and every one of you is responsible for his or her flock. If I know that my, my children were to die with guidance but not a penny to their name, then they've won. Feminism, is it really affecting our Muslim daughters as well? What direction they're going into, what their influences are, who's influencing them, what are they watching, and what are they engaged in? Without a doubt, it is very dangerous, it is very scary. Some fathers who are shy of telling the daughters that they love them. He would open the door, he would kiss her hand, he would take her into the house. And when he would take her into the house, he would sit her down in his position. That love Prophet had for Fatima radiallahu anha, it was so apparent, it was so clear. No one doubted it. Fathers don't constantly tell their daughters, regardless of their age, that I love you. Then there is a chance, there is a chance. That the first guy that they come across that says to them, I love you, they will run run into the arms of that individual. Sheikh Ahmed Billu, born and raised in Southern California, he memorized the Quran at a young age. In 2006, he went to Cairo, Egypt and studied under various great traditional scholars. Next year, in 2007, he was granted Iqama at the Islamic University of Medina. He completed his degree in Arabic language and went on to graduate from the College of Sharia, Islamic Jurisprudence. He currently resides in Southern California, serves as the religious director of the Islamic Center of Science. Cyprus and is also an instructor at the Institute of Knowledge Seminary in Diamond Bar, California. Today, he joins me, your host Kaka Ali, and him being a father of three daughters, he is the best man for this topic, father's love for daughters. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ahmed. Wa alaikum, assalamu wa rahmatullah. I don't know, am I supposed to be welcoming you here or you should be welcoming me? Because I'm from the UK, you're from far west. California, and we're in Dallas right now. So, alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair for giving your time. So the topic that we've got today, you being a father of three daughters, is that right? Yes. And Sheikh Naveed as well, he has three daughters as well. And you guys studied together, Medina University as well. Uh, yes, he was senior to me when I came, he was at the tail end of his studies. Okay, oh, mashallah. Sheikh, wallahi, I'm not just trying to drop any lies, but you don't look that old. I thought you were like 28 or 30 years old. How are you around his time? Because he's my age. <laughs> <laughs> I tell myself I'm 28 every day. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Mashallah. So the topic that we actually have got today um, about daughters, if you could start off with, what is it like being a father of three daughters? Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has blessed me and my wife with uh, four children. So we have four young children. Uh, the the first three are daughters. Uh, they're currently eight and a half, six and a half, four and a half, and then my youngest is Suleiman. He's about almost two and a half. Uh, but you know, we'll focus on the daughters for this episode at least. Um, honestly, it is absolutely amazing being the father uh, to three daughters. They are so precious. Uh, my time with them is so amazing. It is a lot of work. At times, it is stressful. At times, it is extremely tiring. Uh, but just, it, you know, it is so much fun to be around them, so much fun to play with them, so much fun uh, to watch them grow up. And subhanAllah, it is when you have your own children, you realize, like, how deeply you love your own children. You know, your parents always tell you that when you have your own children, you'll understand how much it is that we love you. And you hear it again and again and again. But really, when you have your own children, then, and you feel how much you love them, you realize how much your parents loved you. Um, SubhanAllah, one of the most difficult things that I went through or the one, one of the most scariest things that I went through as a parent uh, was about almost two and a half years ago when my youngest daughter, Sara, uh, she was two and a half at the time and she had gotten a fever and we didn't think much of it, you know, just a fever. Okay, she's sick. 
Uh, she's not as energetic, okay, but that's normal. We were watching her. And I came home from teaching. I teach at the IOK Seminary in California in Diamond Bar. I got home and my wife, she wanted to take the other kids, my older two daughters and the baby uh, Suleiman to the library to play and read books to them and whatnot. She said, can you watch Sara? She's two and a half, she's sick. She didn't have the energy to go out. You know, you can put her down for a nap. She'll nap, you'll take a nap with her. I said, that's completely fine. My wife left with the other kids and I took Sara upstairs. We went into one of the rooms, we laid down and she wanted to like play with a book or play with some toys. So I gave it to her. She was going through the pages. She was two and a half at the time. Didn't have much words, a few words she could communicate. While she was doing that, I was on my phone. Um, responding to emails and you know checking social media whatever it may be and after some time she kind of like nudged me tapped me and she said that you know Baba night night I'm ready to go to sleep so I took the toy or the book or whatever it was from her hand took it from her um, I put it on the nightstand I put my phone on the nightstand and when I turned back to look at her uh, immediately I saw to my surprise and to my shock that she started to shake extremely violently and in that moment, I realized that this is not something that she was doing out of her own control or out of her own will. And she was just shaking extremely violently. And her eyes were rolled back. She was completely non-responsive. She had like closed her hands. And I remember just like this immense, this cloud of fear just coming upon me, right? Something I've never felt before, like afraid and scared and all of these things all at once, what, what's gonna happen? So I remember picking her up and I was at a loss of words. I couldn't like even make a dua. I was like, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And at the same time calling her name, Sara, 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 right? And I'm holding her and she's continuing to shake very violently. Now in the grand scheme of things, this may, this may have been a minute, maybe two minutes perhaps, but it felt like a very, very long time. I'm waiting for it to stop. I remember picking up the phone, uh, calling the ambulance, calling 911 for us here in America. And I remember running downstairs and I'm just saying, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Sara, Sara, Sara. And finally I, I get someone on the, on the other line. And I remember as I was holding my daughter, the thought crossed my mind that, you know what, just put down the phone. Your daughter's passing away in your hands. Just hold her and just like hold her for these last moments. This, this will be your last moments with her alive. And I remember very vividly thinking that this child of mine, I will bury this child. Now the thought had crossed my mind previously that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can test any one of us. I may lose a child during my lifetime. Not that something I want, something that I hope for. Right? But this is the reality of life. And I said, you know, inshallah, if it happens, then inshallah, I'll be patient. I will be sad, but I'll be patient. But that fear that I felt in that moment, and I felt completely helpless. SubhanAllah, it's moments in those like you realize that I am completely powerless. This is in complete control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, when um, I was speaking to someone on the other, on, on the other line, the ambulance, and uh, they said that, look, I described to, to the person on the other side the situation. They said that, look, it seems like your daughter, her fever spiked, and because of that, she's having a seizure. Hopefully, she should be okay. But we, the paramedics are on their way, and, but we need you to do a few things. And I remember during that conversation, at some point, my daughter stopped shaking, and she just kind of fell into my arms. And when she fell into my arms, once again, the thought was like, that's it, she's passed away. But that's it, the shaking's over, she's done. And SubhanAllah, I put her on the ground, I was still on the phone, they said, make sure that she's still breathing. And you know, SubhanAllah, I checked, she was still breathing, she was, she was making noises, she couldn't talk, but she was just making noises, but she, she could not form any words or anything like that. Shortly after that, the paramedics came, they took her to the hospital, I, I accompanied them, and you know, they said that, look, her fever spiked, and because of that, she had a seizure, and you know, just, you know, give her the medication, make sure that she's cool and, and whatnot. And um, subhanAllah, you know, that evening I was back at home with my daughter and she was, you know, back to the regular, back to her shenanigans again, causing trouble and, you know, hitting her sisters and whatever it is that, you know, kids do. And, but for me personally, like I was, I was traumatized. I was like, subhanAllah, like this, this was very difficult for me, right? Even the next few weeks looking at her, even if she was smiling or what, even if she's sleeping, that image kept playing in my head, right? Even the outfit that she was wearing when the seizure happened, I remember that eventually got washed and then, you know, she's wearing it again in a few days or in a week. And I remember seeing that outfit and I went to my wife and I told my wife, I said, that outfit has to go. I said, because I, I immediately connect that outfit to her seizure. And I was like, I, like, I have this immense love you know, for each one of my children. And it just brings that back, that image so scary. And, you know, subhanAllah, kids are such an amazing blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, whether they're girls or boys, and subhanAllah, sometimes it takes an incident like that, something extremely scary, 
like that to remind you how great the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, but additionally, how much we love uh, our children. So going back to your question, you know, it is an absolute amazing uh, journey being a father of three girls. I've been, you know, learning with them. You know, you subhanAllah, you think you know so much, right? You like you've studied Islam and all of these things and you've studied for a number of years and you've gone through life. You have all of these experiences. And then you raise these children and they ask you questions and like, Baba, what about this? What about this? And they argue with, the, with you and things and you're like, man, how do, how do I respond to this? Right? Uh, and subhanAllah, just, just growing with them, learning with them, while also simultaneously, you know, taking care of them, right? And subhanAllah, them also simultaneously teaching me. I remember a while back, um, you know, we had, we had been out the entire family and we got home. It was late at night. And my older two daughters were, were awake, so you know, they got out of the car, but the, the younger two were asleep. And seeing that two of the kids were asleep, for parents of four, especially four young children, when 50% of the job is done, when you're transferring those kids from the car inside the house, right, you want to make sure those kids stay asleep, right? So me and my wife, we transfer, each one of us takes a kid, we get them upstairs, we get them into the room, and they're asleep. And as I'm taking... Uh, one of my kids, I think it was my daughter, Sara, into the room. My older two daughters, they come up, they're so excited. Baba, can we play? It was the weekend. Can we play? Can we play a game? Can we play a game? And I was like, shh, shh, be quiet, be quiet. Just go downstairs. And they're like, Baba, but are you going to come downstairs? Because, you know, they know sometimes Baba falls asleep when he's putting a child to bed or this, that. And I said, I promise I'll come back down, right? And that word was just like, you know, it came out of my mouth. I said, okay, inshallah. I said, I'll promise I'll come down, right? And um, my older daughter's like, yeah, but will you really come down? I'm like, I promise I'll come down, right? And they eventually went down and I'm putting the, my, my daughter that was asleep into the room. And subhanAllah, I hear my second daughter, Safiya, who was maybe at that time, maybe she had just, like, maybe she was five and a half, maybe she was five. Her older sister, Sumaya, says to her, I don't know if Baba will actually come downstairs. And Safiya, who's five, she says, no, I know Baba's gonna come downstairs. He never breaks his promises. And I was like, wow, like the <laughs> immense burden I felt. Like, wow, like I have to fulfill this promise. Like my kids, I teach them to be good people and to have good character and, you know, to, to be people of action and do- But they're building your character. Yeah, and I was like, wow, I have to be downstairs now. That immense burden that I felt, I have to live up to the standard that they are setting. You know? yes, exactly. SubhanAllah, it is an immense responsibility. And as they grow and learn, I'm, I'm trying to grow and learn with them. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you and preserve your children as well. Inshallah, share just on this as well. Let's take it from here. And some fathers may make this mistake. They say, like, you know, a, um, a couple, husband and wife, they have one son, two daughters, two sons, two daughters, or whatever. Is raising daughters dominantly a mother's job? Like, how much does, like, an input does a father have to be in creating an ideal Muslimah of that daughter, right from the beginning and further on? Honestly, I don't believe it's primarily the, 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 the mother's job. Does the mother play this significant role, right? Does the mother play a very important and crucial role? Absolutely. And is it perhaps the majority? But the father plays a huge role, right? My daughters, many times I see that they look up to me, right? Uh, they, they're, they're trying to do sometimes what it is that I'm trying to do. They're watching every one of my actions. And I know, I know that, you know, when I tell my daughters to do something, right? They don't want to let me down many times, right? Yes, th there are kids, they, you know, they're, they're normal. Sometimes they disobey me. But many times they want to they wanna keep me happy. You want to make sure that, you know, um, I'm pleased with them, right? Uh, and subhanAllah, we, we as fathers, we play a significant role in their life, right? They look up to us. They look up to us. They don't necessarily say it, but they look up to us as their leaders, as their, as their protectors, as their care caretakers, right? Um, alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me. I've had a very close relationship uh, with all of my daughters, right? The different stages they go in life, you know, the relationship changes. I have a different relationship with, with each one of my daughters. Um, you know, uh, so, so for example, one of my daughters might be like, she needs more emotion, she needs more hugs, right? Uh, one, of my, one of my daughters might have a stronger personality, right? And which each one of those, I realize that, hey, I have to kind of learn how to deal with his personality and how to cater to that personality. Uh, but the father plays a very, very important role in kind of like, uh, in teaching her what to expect, right? Not just teaching her life and, you know, teaching her experiences, but showing her like, hey, this is how a man is supposed to act. So just on this point, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Please forgive me. 
like you said, your daughters wanting to please the father. How much of that is coming from the fear or the love? How do you balance the two? Because some fathers might say, because I'm the father, I just have to build the fear factor. The mother's going to give all the like, you know, cushy love and hugging and everything. And the fathers actually make that mistake. Is that a mistake? Or should father just keep it to the firm love, tough love for the daughters? Honestly, and I know people might have different perspectives on this, like, um, I think, at, f f with, especially with all kids, with all kids, but because we're focusing on, on daughters, right? Mm -hmm. With daughters, it has to be an immense amount of love. It has an immense amount of love. At times, are there times that, you know, I get, you know, I get angry with my daughters, I'm upset with my daughters, right? Um, absolutely, right? You know, I'm normal, sometimes, you know, I do that, that I'm not proud of, you know, with my kids in terms of raising my voice, right? trying my best, right? But generally, I try to have my relationship with my daughters that is always, you know, it's always love, right? You know, you know, the people might see me teaching classes, giving hope up, but the image my daughters have of me is very, very different, right? They know, like, I'm always goofing around, I'm always messing around, you know. They'll, they'll tell me, Baba, you, you joke too much, right? Um, but, you know, subhanAllah, just recently, one of my daughters, she said the absolute sweetest thing, right? Um, but it was strange at the same time. I was, uh, my wife was out with her friends. You know, she, mashallah, my, my wife, she takes care of the kids a lot. I'm out working, traveling, you know, and I had a weekend before Ramadan and I wasn't doing anything. My wife said, you know, she wanted to go out with her friends. I said, okay, I got it. You know, I'll handle the household. I got this. I'll feed all the kids breakfast and stuff. And subhanAllah, it was the morning. My wife wasn't home. I was feeding all the kids breakfast. And you know, it wasn't extra extravagant breakfast. It was just, you know, cereal and milk, basically, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or warming something in the microwave. I couldn't make anything. But um, my, my second daughter, she was talking to her sisters, right? And I heard the beginning part of her sentence. She said, I wish Baba was a kid, right? And then I kind of like tuned out. You know, I, you know, I was like, she's just, you know, kids, they talk. And I was like, oh, she's just talking, talking, yeah. right? And then she said, so I could get married. And that's how, what I heard. And I was like, what? I was like, I, I must have missed a few sentences in the middle, right? So I asked her, I said, you know, Sophia, I said, Sophia, what did you say, right? And she's like, she kind of like paused. I think she was a little shy. I was like, Sophia, I want to hear it. What did you say? She said, I said, you said you wish I was a kid. Why would you wish I was a kid? How would I take care of you then? You know, like, I'm your father to take care. Why would you wish I was a kid? You know? She says, Baba, I wish you were a kid so that when I become an adult, then you would be a, an adult at the same time and then we could get married. <laughs> and in my head, simultaneously, I was like, remember to teach kids about how marriage works. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But then I was like, oh man, that is so beautiful. This is her expressing like that she looks up to me and she That's loves me. That's an ideal man for her. Yeah, like yeah. Th exactly what she's saying. I'm like, yes. I'm like, wow. I'm like, wow. And I'm like, man, I really have to like live up to a standard now. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, subhanAllah, that is so sweet. They keep okay. it in check. Yeah. And she's like, she doesn't know, understand how marriage works. Mm. But this idea, like she understands that like she's going to marry someone that's going to be around her age. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, Baba, I wish you were a kid so that we could grow up. Oh. And all of the qualities that I see in you, I could, I could experience them as an adult as well. <laughs> you know, subhanAllah, it's like, it's like, wow, that is deep. That is such a great expression of love and how kids, you know, um, express their emotions in the strangest of ways. But there's so much beauty behind it. And subhanAllah, it's inspiring as a parent. You're like, like I got to be better. I got to do better. Exactly. Jazakallah, mashallah. See, just on from this, let's take it towards one of a bit more for a kind of a tough question now. What if the daughter goes astray? Is it primarily, again, the mother to blame? Like, who would be the one? Like, you know, who can you actually, who would you point the fingers at? <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if the daughter were to go astray, who, who would you blame, right? Honestly, the Prophet said, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَاعِيَتِهِ Right? Every one of you is a shepherd. And every one of you is responsible for his or her flock. Right? And honestly, we could make a very strong case that the father is, is primary to, primarily to blame. Right? Now, obviously, guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We know the story of Nuh alayhi salam and his son went astray. And this was of the greatest of prophets. And... He was not able to guide his son because guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us wish and want, right, and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only for our guidance, but the guidance of our children, right? If I know that my, my children were to die with guidance, but not a penny to their name, then, you know, as difficult as that is, like, I want my child to be successful. Mm. But if my child dies with nothing, but dies with iman, then they've won, mm. right? Yeah. And, and hopefully that's a sign mm. that I've done something right as a parent. And another Prophet that you just reminded me of, as well, exactly the same. 
and it relates to our question as well, Lut alayhi salam, his wife who betrayed him, but the daughter stuck with the father and they got that character from their father. So it's not always the mother to blame and they got it from the father. Correct. Very, very, very beautiful point, right? Obviously, both parents play a very crucial role in the upbringing of the children and the education of the children. And they play, perhaps you can even say, different roles, right? The mother might be their primary caretaker. If the mother is not working, if she's a stay-at-home mom, she's the one that they interact with the most. She is their number one teacher. But still, the father plays a very, very primary, uh, very, very important role. And like you just said, as I'll have like, your daughter, as I'll, that she's seeing you as like, you know, the main model that she's looking up to. And that's what she wants to. And of course, if that's what she wants for herself, she wants those good qualities in herself as well. And may Allah SWT bless her with those beautiful qualities as well. So again, another question, let me drop that, drop that to you, Chef. Feminism. How much is that affecting our daughters? And it could be any age. At what age do you think it starts affecting and is it really affecting our Muslim daughters as well? Is it affecting our Muslim daughters? It is absolutely affecting our Muslim daughters, right? At what age I think it will uh, depend on what environment they're in, uh, what country they're in, even for us in the U.S., what state they're in, uh, what is their friend circle like, are they, in, are they homeschooled, are they private schooled, are they public schooled? All of these things will, will play a factor, right? But subhanAllah, we are seeing without a doubt that it is creeping into to Muslim households. It is creeping into the minds of our, of our, of our young daughters, right, of, of different ages. And it's, and it's very scary to see, right? Uh, but once again, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with children. It is upon us uh, as parents, as fathers, also as mothers, right, uh, to kind of make sure that we're kind of not just teaching our children on a daily basis, but constantly aware of what direction they're going into or what direction they're going in the direction of and what their influences are. Who's influencing them? What are they watching? If they have a phone, what are they engaged in, right? Who are they listening to, right? What are they doing in their free times? Without a doubt, it is very dangerous. It is very scary, right? We want uh, our daughters to be successful. We want them to be upright uh, Muslimas. Uh, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless, bless them with an immense amount of knowledge and, and righteousness. And all, for the, We want them honestly to be successful in this world and the next. But we want them, as I mentioned earlier, the most important thing, we want them always to live a life that's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So any ideologies, any thoughts uh, that enter the house or enter their minds that contradict Islam, we have to be aware of it and ask ourselves, how can I counter this? How can I explain it to them? Sometimes it will be the parents. Sometimes we need to, sometimes they won't want to listen to the parents, right? I've, uh, I've spoken to imams who have like older daughters and they say that, you know, our daughters look, us, look at us as, as backwards and too conservative and, and this and that because some level of feminism will, you know, will almost always creep itself into the household, right? So sometimes it's, it's the teachers. Who are they surrounding themselves with? Who are their mentors, right? And their mentors will help them. But we have to be cautious and aware of these things, you know, because it's, it's the reality of the life that we're living right now in the society that we're in. Of course, exactly. So does Islam, maybe a little bit of a different question, eh? does Islam enforce equality or fairness? Or is it a bit of both? Uh, equality, I remember... And because you've got a son as well, right? So we can actually compare the two. Maybe not necessarily equality, but equity, mm -hmm. right? Um, we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created people differently, right? Um, you know, there's also, you know, sometimes people don't want to hear this. There's sometimes even a different way that you deal with, with children, right? You don't deal with boys and girls the same way. You treat them differently. They may have different responsibilities. They both have chores in the household, responsibilities. But what those chores and responsibilities are, right? Um, so... Yani understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created men and women differently, right? With different natures, with different emotions, right? With different abilities, right? And teaching our kids that, right? And demanding of them, or not demanding, but asking of them, right? What is within their capabilities and knowing what their capabilities are, what do they, what's easy for them, what's difficult for them. Treating them fairly, treating them fairly, but that doesn't necessarily mean treating them the same exact way, right? Treating them what's fair in their context, right? Uh, and also sometimes, you know, subhanAllah, young children, young children, whether it's all girls or you have girls and boys, right? You might see some, sometimes a child will say, hey, that's not fair. What's not fair? Well, you did this and you did this. It's good to hear them out because they might make a valid point that you as a parent is doing something wrong that you didn't notice that they caught, that they, they caught on to, 
right? Whether it's between, you know, my daughters or between my daughters and, and my son. My son is really young, but perhaps something I will see in the future, right? But being very cautious of this, that they always feel that, you know, there is fairness in the house. There is justice in the house, right? Um, yani equality, you can say equality, but, you know, I uh, remember Sheikh Naveed where at the Miftah conference, he, he said that, you know, I prefer equity. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and I think we all are on the same page about this. We understand what they're saying. That Once again, going back to my point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created men and women differently. They have different needs, different abilities and capabilities, right? And in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're all equal. In akramakum indallahi atqaakum. The one that is the most noble in the sight of Allah is the one, the one that has the most taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly. Yeah, Sheikh, I'm going to give you two more questions, then we'll wrap up because I know you have a flight to catch and fulfill your promise to your daughter that you just made as well. You need to go home back to California, inshallah. She's like, Baba, when are you coming home? And I really? said, today. And then she was like, no, when today? Oh, <laughs> they keep you in check, inshallah. Yeah, Sheikh, some fathers who are shy of telling their daughters that they love them, any advice for them? Because there are even some I've actually known of some families, some daughters who say we even way out of respect, they wear hijab in front of their own fathers as well. What would you say? Like how, how embarrassed should the father be of telling the daughters they love them? How much can the father show love to the daughters? Some advice on that, please, for those for us. You know, our example, our best example, our primary example is the Prophet ﷺ. And Prophet ﷺ had such a beautiful relationship with Fatima radiallahu anha. You know, Prophet ﷺ is Aisha radiallahu anha. She tells us when Fatima radiallahu anha would come to visit Prophet ﷺ, he would open the door, he would kiss her hand, he would take her into the house. And when he would take her into the house, he would sit her down in his position where he, where he would sit as a way of honoring her, right? And then subhanAllah, we see that Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrates that when Prophet ﷺ would visit Fatima, that Fatima would treat him, she would reciprocate that treatment, right? And subhanAllah, that love, that love the Prophet ﷺ had for Fatima radiallahu anha, it was so apparent, it was so clear. No one doubted it. It is so important that we as fathers, right, express to our daughters constantly, right, as much as we can, I love you, I love you, I love you, right? Um, you know, once again, you know, from a very young age and, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me with a very strong emotional connection with my daughters. I say I love you, you know, and even if they, you know, sometimes I joke with them, they say, um, and I'll joke with them about it. I'll say, I love you, right? And they'll say, I love you back. And I'll joke with them. And, you know, my wife doesn't like it. You know, I'll say, hey, Sumeya, say, Sophia, you know how much Baba loves you? And they'll say, Allah. And I'll say, no, no, Baba loves you just that much, right? Just to play with them a little bit, right? Just to engage them. They're like, yeah, well, we love you that much, then, <laughs> you know? But just to kind of, you know, make it fun, right? And then I'll say, no, no, Samia, Safiya, Sarah, I love you guys so, so much, right? How much do you guys love me? Oh, we love you so much, right? But we, we have fun with it, right? And, or like when I feel like one of them is mad at me, I'm like, hey, I love you. I love you too. I'm like, no, do you really love me or do you just love me, right? Uh, but no, subhanAllah, it's very important having a strong emotional connection. Uh, with your daughters, I've heard it from a number of teachers and mentors that if fathers, if fathers don't constantly tell their daughters, regardless of their age, that I love you, then there is a chance, there is a chance that the first guy that they come across that says to them, I love you, they will run, run into the arms of that individual. And that's what we don't want as fathers. Right? Mm. We want to protect our daughters to the best of our ability. But we as humans, all of us, men and women, we have emotional needs that need to be fulfilled. So having a strong connection and expressing uh, that with your daughters, saying I love you, uh, hugging them, you know, um, you know, as my, when my when my daughters were when my daughters were, were were younger and stuff, you know, I would love kissing them. My wife would say, "Stop, stop, stop, stop!" I'm like, no, she enjoys it. She enjoys it. You know, but alhamdulillah, finding different ways as they mature in life, right, to express that love to them and making sure that they always never ever doubt that you love them. Well, like that's so beautiful because exactly what you just said as well. That because if the father is actually showing the love, if someone tries to take them from marriage they got a competition yeah. to deal with because they're not going to be able to just give a little bit and yeah, that's enough for me. That was a beautiful point. Zagdakhet. Your Sheikh, let me drop an, a last question to you. Any advice that you can give to the fathers to raise good daughters? Uh, SubhanAllah, you know, I, first of all, I'll preface my answer by saying I, I'm not perhaps the best person to answer this question. I'll try my best uh, because I'm still in this process. Like I said, my eldest is eight and a half, right? 
Um, but subhanAllah, one, one always constantly make dua, constantly make dua. If you're a parent and you have children, whether there are, they are boys or girls, constantly make dua for Allah subhanahu, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them, but also make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always keep the connection strong between you as the parent, whether you're the mother and the father, and your son and your daughter, right? Um, grow with them, learn with them, spend as much time as you can because they grow up so, so fast. Like I said, my children are so young, but still yet it feels like, you know, sometimes we, we find, me and my wife, we find ourselves that after our children have gone to sleep and it's been such a long day, you know, and we're so tired and we're so exhausted, and we wish we're like, oh, if we just had a moment, if we just had an hour to ourselves, and then we're just there, you know, sitting on the couch or lying in bed, and we're just looking through pictures of our kids. And we're like, oh, so I remember when they used to do that, when they used to do that. They were so young. They grow up so, so fast, right? Um, SubhanAllah, my eldest is now eight and a half, and it feels like just, just a few months ago she was born. And w where did all of these eight years go, right? Um, but SubhanAllah, just spend as much time as you can with them because those moments as they grow through life, especially when they're young, is so, so precious and we'll never ever get those moments back. You know, you may have another child, but that moment with that specific child, you'll never ever get it back, right? Cherish it, nurture it, um, you know, use it as an opportunity to get closer to that child. That child will, you, you will not only teach that child, but that child will teach you many things about yourself and teach you about, you know, your character. And like I said, like I started with, constantly pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He keeps them guided and that He keeps that relationship between yourself and them strong. Because there is no dua that is stronger for a child than the dua of the parent. When, when that parent supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that child, that is the strongest supplication for that child. Well, hey, that's so true. See, I've got nine nieces. I haven't got any children myself, but I've got nine nieces, no nephews. I love them to bits as well. And one of my sisters, she's got twins, and one of them is in the hospital. She's having a major back surgery at the moment. She's been there for 12 weeks. And my sister, this has happened two days ago. I was in America. My sister WhatsApp called me, and I'm speaking to her. Actually, my mom said it to me. She goes, uh, your sister's saying to make dua for her, make dua for her. Because they think I'm the practicing one. I'm this, I'm that. And I always tell my mom, and I tell my sister as well. And she believes me now as well. A mother's dua, a parent's dua, doesn't matter what sheikh, what practicing, what whatever, the heart that is going to come out from, you can't compete with that. There can't be anything better than that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your daughters, a beautiful, beautiful character of their parents, and bless your daughters to have men who are going to be, inshallah, the best for them for their this world and the akhirah. Amen, amen, amen. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah.